welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, uh, listening, or watching it, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Uh, today's show is jam-packed with awesome, and if you want more awesome, you can follow us on social links down there, up there, around, they're everywhere, go find them, you know what they look like by now, Instagram's little camera thing, Facebook's the F, Twitter's the bird, Patreon's the P. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, welcome to today's episode, episode number 77. We have hit... Man, 77 episodes. Two lucky numbers smush together to make a bigger lucky number. Squeeze them together, you get two of them. All right, so the schedule for today's episode, guys, we of course have our random card of the day. We're going to talk about some changes to the Magic Judge program that came about this past week. We're going to talk about GP Santa Clara because that is a particularly interesting GP. Uh, we also have our question of the week and then our packs. Before we get into all of that, you may notice. This lovely Ixalan bundle, as I have been corrected on Instagram, not fat pack. Wait, they're um, bundles now? It's a bundle. Yeah. No, See? I'm going to call bundle. them fat packs forever. Yeah, they're fat packs. Uh, we are giving away this exact bundle slash fat pack. But we don't um, need this one. Literally this one. This All one. you yeah. need to do, go to our Instagram, make sure you are following us there, repost the giveaway post that we made, and then just tag us in it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, all you have to do, gotcha, buddy. we will mark you down as part of the giveaway, and we will be picking that winner on January 22nd. It will be Monday, January 22nd, so, so this coming Monday. It's, um, I mean, basically a week from now. <clears throat> well, uh, no, this goes out on this Wednesday. This goes out on Wednesday. Right. It's a week from when we're recording this. <laughs> um, <laughs> breaking that fourth, fourth wall are only hard, two minutes dude. in. Um, but yes, so if you are interested, make sure to uh, enter that giveaway. We're only This is our only Ixalan giveaway mm-hmm. from here on out. We're basically going to jump right into Rivals after this, so we'll give away something from that. Yep. Um, but we thought we'd do one last hurrah with Ixalan. So that's it for that. Let's get into the random card of the day. I love this. If you don't use Scryfall, by the way, you should. It's oh, awesome. yeah. Um, who it's the new one. showed you this again? Talarian. Uh, the Professor. The professor Brian. All of the above. All right, yeah, random card. Is Brian? It is Brian. Oh. Ah, it's a, okay. It's a classic. It's a great card. Uh, Rampant Growth is the card we have gotten today. It is one in a green for a sorcery. Uh, search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped. You then shuffle your library. Just a great ramp card. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. there's no way around it. It's fantastic. It's classic ramp. We see this everywhere. Yeah. Um, great in draft formats, obviously, if you're trying to ramp into anything big. Uh, it's honestly, it's not amazing and constructed, I don't think. Uh, but no. You'd be um, right. I definitely think, you know, casual players love a card like this, right? It's casual ramp. Yeah, just I good. used rampant growth in my first casual deck. Yeah. Actually, the first prism deck I made. Prism five, deck? Or five prison deck. Prism. Prism. Five okay. color. That's some people have adorably named them prism decks because they're all spectrum of the magic colors. But Makes sense. um that deck was uh not very good. But <laughs> yeah, I had these in there. Um It and, makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's worth noting it grabs any basic land. So mm-hmm. in a prism deck, right. uh you can be, get any of your missing colors mm-hmm. or anything like that. Uh it is just a common, it's not worth any significant amount of money. God, you can no. pick these up for basically nothing yeah Yeah. it's nothing um at all it's a penny card really so yeah pick these up great for casual play great for uh budget decks and things like that Mm -hmm. it's just a fantastic card yeah and it's it's worth noting that a lot of ramp um well quote unquote ramp cards like this will put lands into your hand yes and this is so much better in that it puts it right onto the field it does uh it basically on turn two if you get this off it basically jumps you on your turn three you'll be on turn four Mm -hmm. is really the idea with cards like this and so it's just sort of skipping you ahead which in magic means a lot yeah Uh, it's big it's it's in a way, tempo, right? Like, it's just amazing. Definitely. So If they can't kill you on turn three, you're golden. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Fantastic card. Uh, obviously not worth anything, but still a great no. card. So, yeah. very love to see that, honestly. It's pretty card. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, very quickly, we're going to talk about the judge uh, ruling yeah, that basically went way. through. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> if you do not know, if you haven't been keeping up with all the drama that's been going on still, you're missing out. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, kind of. 
so kind of yeah it is important in the community right now so i would definitely suggest going out researching on your own mm -hmm. uh what's going on with everything basically but um essentially what we have mm -hmm. or what wizards has announced is that background checks will be ma will be mandatory for judges right. event staff things like that at any sanctioned major event as well as local game stores throughout so uh we are going to be seeing i think not much change <laughs> you'd hope right hopefully not um, much it's important to note i think why this change came about yes um because it is a portion of the story yep. and it's interesting to me so really we have this change thanks to a prominent <laughs> if not um uh what's the word that i want to think of unliked yeah <laughs> Jeremy from Unsleep Media um, really pushed for this, which is yeah. interesting. Now, the reason is um, he made mention of, I know this is a family podcast. However, um, we're going <laughs> to skirt this as politically as I can. Uh, he made mention <laughs> of uh, sexual misconduct among certain members of the wizard staff. No big name members, of course, but... Judges. Actually, a couple. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. I'm, we're not going to point out names. I'm just going to go ahead and. The story's say out that. there. Um, yeah. I apparently have missed pieces of it. However, I've been trying my best to keep up. Good. You can fill me in when the camera's off. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, he pointed out sexual misconduct, said essentially uh, <clears throat> this is uh, irreprehensible, is the word I want to say. Okay. Reprehensible? That might be it. This cannot happen. This yes. is not okay. And I am in 100% agreement. Yes. Uh, this is a big change. It's honestly odd to me that this, are, this wasn't a practice already. It's worth noting for other card games, including Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, um, this has been a thing from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, judges at events, even at local game store level, that's always been man mandatory for them. They've always needed to have a background check. And the thing about a background check is it's 10 to 20 bucks for a background check, and that's it. It's not that big of a deal. And so uh, Jeremy, as much as personal opinion, he's not my, I, I don't particularly enjoy his content. I don't particularly enjoy his personality. However, I do think he was fighting, in this case, kind of a good fight. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it should have been mandatory from the beginning, and I think now that that is a, a, a requirement, I think the magic community overall will be in a better place for it. Um, mm -hmm. He also, I believe, started a fund. Uh, and this isn't us advertising his fund or anything like that, but he opened a fund that you can donate to to provide background checks for certain wow. judges if they cannot afford it. Um, so by all means, you know, that's up to you if you want to donate to that. Uh, but mm -hmm. he has brought that up. And so it's just for those people who maybe couldn't afford it. It's only 10 or 20 bucks, so you know, it's so. one of those things. But it is a volunteer service, and so yeah. um, they're not making money off of this. They're generally paid in cards. Yeah. Uh, at least they have been in the past. So I, I honestly think that's commendable. It is. Uh, Absolutely. Jeremy, I'm not, again, not my favorite person in the world, but in this case, I think he's fighting a good fight. I don't necessarily agree with how this whole fight got brought up, because I think a lot of it is he decided once the whole band thing happened and he kind of had his vendetta against uh, Wizards that he sort of built up all this stuff and now he's got his plan. And he's very public about he's got this huge long plan of releasing all this information. Um, and so in a little, in kind of a weird way, I don't. he's spinning it into a good fight, which is good, but I think... There might be a little bit of a vengeance kind of thing going on still. I mean, that's fine. But honestly. hey, this is some good that came yeah. out of it. So if by all means. If the bad guys lose at the end of the day, yes. I'm kind of okay. Absolutely. Um, And I, I think that ultimately in terms of a vendetta, wizards won't get hurt too bad. Oh, no. Because of won't. this, of no. course. It'll be um, fine. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, kids play this game. So. Yes. And we, we do to need to protect the kids. Um, protect everybody. It's not. I mean, that's really. This is supposed to be just a fun game, right? Like, it's not meant to be taken yeah. to that level. And so if people take it there, they need to not be here. Um, yeah. So all for that, a very welcome change, in my opinion. Hey, Happy to see that. Amen. 
Um, there are people that are maybe a little less happy about it. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's just because it's like, oh, the bureaucracy coming into magic and all this stuff. We thought we could leave all that out of it. And it's like, well, but this is just a safety issue. Well, like, it's not. Yeah. It literally takes you a day. You just go down to your local police station, say, hey, I want a background check. Give them $10 and you're good. Like, that's all you have to do. It's not yeah. a major thing. Um, <clears throat> and if you have nothing to hide, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Uh, so sure. that's that's sort of my take on it, um, and it's keeping people safe, which is exactly what we need to do. So, right. right, welcome change, Jeremy. Never thought I'd say this, but thank you. Good job, dude. Uh, well done there. Um, so moving on, we are going to talk about GP Santa Clara. It took place uh the weekend of the seventh of January, uh, and this is a very unique gp yeah this was interesting different cool, normally blah, blah, blah. yeah it's normally when you see a gp it's the modern gp right or the standard gp or the legacy gp this was all three crammed into one yeah so it's team trios and what that means is three people got together formed a team one person on that team played standard one person on that team played modern and one person on that team played the legacy uh and then they battled against other teams it was this huge big event it was awesome we saw a huge number of decks maybe not in standard and it was fun yeah, uh i watched yeah. a little bit of the gameplay with this it was a really really good uh at least the videos that i were, i was watching the gameplay was fantastic it was really cool to see a variety of formats mm -hmm. in one singular event uh yeah. that, i just thought that was fantastic i'd love to see more events like this yeah i think that's a great way to keep older uh formats alive yeah in even if you push for standard if you include them all at a major tournament you can't not play them i think it's great a great idea exactly and i like too that it was a team event because it really brought the community a little bit together because you have to go out and find your teammates um in a lot of cases because legacy is the format that is least accessible out of these mm -hmm. uh i know a few people were talking marshall sutcliffe being one of them saying you know a lot of legacy players he talked to were getting multiple phone calls from people saying hey we need a legacy player we need one do you want to play for our team all this stuff so yeah. they got their pick of teams right <laughs> like that was kind of sweet mean, yeah um so uh it, the, it sort of influenced the community side of things and got people calling up each other saying hey we need somebody for this team we need somebody for this so why not join right yeah. um it's kind of so really really sweet happy to see this hopefully we get more of this in the future but i did want to talk a little bit about some of the decks that we saw in a couple of these formats um we'll go over standard first because it'll take about two seconds um holy <laughs> crap oops, let this. me go back i already have it pulled up this so, um, is disheartening as all get out. Here is the top eight in order from first all the way down to eighth place. Number one, Teamer Energy. Number two, Teamer Energy. Number three, Teamer Energy. Four, uh, Teamer Energy. Five, Teamer Energy. Six and seven, Teamer Energy. And then eight, Blue White Control. Oh, <laughs> standard is saved! Um, seven of the top eight decks? Come on. Can we... Okay, here's the thing about Team Air Energy. It's the safest pick for a team event. I get that. Yep. It's, a, it's the best it's the deck best in deck standard, standard right now. I also get that. But can we not just have some creativity, honestly? Can we just, like, boycott Team Air Energy? They don't need to ban it. Can we just boycott it? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, No, because there will be people like me who want to win. <sighs> Um, I would so much rather play an interesting deck than play Team or Energy right now. <laughs> you know what is nice, though? What yeah, what's nice? up? Um, I have given it some thought about the standard uh, um, climate that we're in. Yeah. Uh, and while I don't think there are many cards and rivals that are going to come out and change it up, I do think the Dire Fleet Poisoner is going to shake up the meta in a big way. I hope so. Um, I really hope so. Because it trades with everything. It does trade with everything. It's That's not, a good thing. It's, it's not, efficient and it trades. Because one big issue with Teamer Energy is you can give things hexproof like super easily. Yeah. You've got root bound defenses for anything that can't get it on its own. Bristling Hydra can get it if you just spend energy. Yeah. Um, but the Poisoner, that's just death touch, man. That yeah. can jump in and kill stuff, which is great. The... Um, uh, the phoenix stays on board uh, above all of their other creatures. Mm -hmm. um, anything that Teamer Energy plays with flying, excluding Glorybringer, really, it fights 
so well. And even yeah. Glorybringer, I am predicting can fight Pearly pretty efficiently. Sure. Um, so while I don't think that it's going to be a huge shakeup, Teamer is still going to be one of the strongest. I think, I believe... We that, have a shot. Yeah. I think, I think that the meta is going to get a little rustled. I hope so. A little bit. Uh, I really hope you're right. The Poisoner is already like a $5 card. I think mm-hmm. you could just keep going up. Um, because it's so good. It is good. And it can potentially give something else Death Touch, which I think is worth noting. Because yeah. I don't think necessarily we'll see a Pyrite deck out of this, which is obviously where it's probably at its best. Yeah. But we may see some people play a variety of Pirates just to mm-hmm. get something to trigger that off of. Yeah. Um, and it may not be anything super impactful, but it may be something that we see. So um, I'd be interested to see how that ends I could up. see Kite Sail Freebooter, honestly. Yeah, um, I could, 100%. In a... Sort of a control-ish strategy. I was going to say in a slower... Um, grindier matchup. Yeah, a slower maybe a black-blue deck, although I don't know what their win con would be out. Right. right. They do um, get quite a good amount of removal, though, mm-hmm. which is really nice. Um, they right. don't get... What I would be interested to see is an Esper deck, because we've already seen Esper uh, God Pharaoh's Gift. Right. That's already been a thing, and it plays a lot... Well, some of the lists, at least, play a mm-hmm. lot of the removal in the way of Settle the Wreckage, Cast mm-hmm. Out, um, and then in black, obviously, the Veraska's Contempt or whatever. Yeah, Walk uh, the Plank, stuff like Walk that. the Plank. There's plenty of removal in those colors, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of Esper list out yeah. of this without the God Pharaoh's Gift, just sort of playing that grindy sort of trade trade off resources until you can outpower them wouldn't be too surprised yeah um, um you do run into issues with teamer because you don't necessarily outpower them very quickly right because again they get to play stuff for basically i mean they just get to play vanilla creatures that give them benefits they're not vanilla obviously but i mean they fit the deck yeah you have to play creatures so they play creatures that influence other creatures it's so synergistic it's scary and that's the thing it's a resource game magic has always been a resource game and energy gives an extra resource that is usable throughout the entire game right and that's what's so good about these decks is and there's no way to interact with the energy other than gaining more of it and using it so i mean you could technically disallow energy abilities dis- but yeah the ability but it's like that's they can so... just use more energy and that counts right. as a separate you know like right. it just doesn't there's no real way to interact with the energy right. um and the way of spending it so uh it's just one of those situations hopefully we'll see that shaken up a little bit with rivals um not super yeah. counting on it yeah, but not, hey maybe I'm, um and honestly teamer just might get scarier in that a lot of their creatures will help you get out uh the primal hunger <laughs> yeah probably Just so. thinking about that too yeah bristling hydra is a four three for four yeah <laughs> i mean there's a lot of good stuff um yeah. anyway let's jump to back all the way to legacy first sure. um and this top eight is a little more diverse but not quite as diverse as the modern top eight but we do see quite a few grixis delver lists i believe three were in the top eight we did see two show and tell decks, yeah. uh, which is Neat. always great to see. True Name Bug was in there uh, in eighth place, and then Four Color Control was up at third place. Um, there were some interesting things I thought, and this is something that I I don't know Legacy decks all that well. I love Legacy to watch, but I don't know the deck list very well. So we were actually looking through these lists a little bit. Yeah. We notice show and tell runs omniscience, and that may be something that you already know, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. I wouldn't honestly have thought to run omniscience, but it makes. I mean, it so makes much sense. sense. You show and tell it out. You get to play everything for free at that point. Uh, yeah. Um, Grixis Delver coming in first. I think that's fantastic. Uh, Delver decks, I think, have kind of taken a back burner over the past little bit of time. I mean, they've always been good, but like, yeah. there's been stuff that outpaces them. Right, um, and with the pro band, they have all gotten a little hosed. Well, I mean, in that, Legacy, that a, probably still in. Yeah, it's still oh, in. that's right. Um, we're in Legacy. How oh, we're in Legacy? Not modern. Um, so it's very good, but with things like Fatal Push being mm-hmm. printed, which does see play in these formats, um, it's that not quite as should. exciting. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, really happy though to see Delver back. Yeah. and doing very well. Uh, fantastic there again. We already talked show and tell. Four Color Control is a list I didn't really look at, but it's got all the good stuff. It's got Leovold, Snapcaster, Deathrite, Baleful Strix. That's its creature package. 
Of course, Jace the Mind Sculptor is in. I mean, duh. You know, no surprise there. Him to yeah. Turok being a really good card. Uh, Thought sees Kologon's Command, which I'm happy to see. A um, lot of good stuff. So just sort of a control good stuff deck, really. Um, and then True Name Bug is every bug list kind of makes the most. It's Leovold's and yeah. True Name Nemesis uh, and Death Rites, and that's really the the backbone of that deck. Yeah, you see um, the all the same instant sorcery package. Yeah, for tricks it's and the control and package. Yeah. Three Fatal Push is in this list <laughs> that Jacob Wilson <laughs> ran. Uh, so you see that has a good matchup up against Delver. Yeah. Um, but Thought Seize, Ponder, Force of Will, the whole control package, the whole destruction, land you're, destruction. Yeah, game. you're not seeing anything super new there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just all solid decks, fun decks. Legacy's great. Yeah. Not very accessible, all but awesome. I gotta say. So, coming to Modern, which had the most diverse uh top eight that we've seen and yeah. modern honestly as a whole has continued to post very interesting top eights over the past few months definitely um we talked about this a couple months ago already that modern is in kind of a really healthy place right now yep. where we're seeing this huge variety of decks and at one point i think the last deck to really kind of take over was death shadow but there are checks for that right like right. there's now fatal push there's ways to deal with it and so we see a huge variety and we're seeing what I think to be one of the healthiest states of modern that we've had in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> There's always seems to be a deck that comes to the top. There hasn't been recently. Yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. It's encouraging. Except Scape Shift, which had is done really well lately, but it's not taking over. So don't don't go too crazy there. <laughs> right. Um and Scape Shift was not even in this top eight. So just clarify. Just, yeah, something to see there. There was a Scape Shift like in the finals, it was Scape Shift versus Scape Shift, and it was the most uninteresting match I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I can't imagine that. They don't fun. interact with each other. Right. And so they're just, whoever gets the combo wins, and that's it. So it was really uninteresting. Yep. This top eight, though, fantastic. Uh, in first place, we have Dredge, which I'm super happy to see that Dredge actually still competes very well without the Grave Troll. Yeah, that's um, kind of awesome. Uh, and we, we knew that the Dredge is a good deck. Right. We didn't right. know it was going to take first, right? Like, no. that's sort of where I was, at least. And to me, Modern is all, has always had this quality about it whenever there's not a cream of the crop deck, mm -hmm. that there are plenty of decks that can sneak a tournament win. Oh, yeah. And a tournament first in a bunch of different ways. 8-Rack always comes to mind. Yeah, 8-Rack eight, eight can just pop up in a top 8 yep. for no particular reason other than it has favorable matchups now and then and breezes through and that's not to say there's something fundamentally flawed about the way that it's not like a rock paper scissors match but <laughs> um plenty of decks have good matchups and enough decks have good matchups that it's competitive across the yeah. board and dredge lost the best piece of dredge and it's still here i'm like I was, it's awesome i'm so surprised yeah i am too a bit i mean i knew it was a good deck still mm -hmm. don't get me wrong but again i didn't think it'd be taking home the win yeah, i didn't think it'd be top eight over no. over like, some of death the other shadow yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> um a couple of these other lists he already mentioned death shadow coming in third uh blue white control uh also placed very highly at That's second sweet. place Blue Eye Control's been sort of around that top eight list uh, mm -hmm. for the past few GPs, so I'm happy to see it. Um, yeah. Affinity took two spots. Eldrazi Tron, no surprise there. Uh, two decks that I find very interesting, though, uh, in third and fourth place, Mardu Midrange. Uh, this is a deck that's been creeping up a little bit recently. When we think midrange, generally we think Jund, right? right. That's like classic midrange deck for me. Sure. Um, Mardu Midrange plays in a fairly similar way with a few subtle differences. So it has all of the thought seizes, it has the terminate, it has lightning bolt, Kologon's command, fatal push, all the removal package you would expect. Um, it this deck main boarded one blood moon, which I think is a bit interesting, yeah. but it does shut down Tron decks completely. So to take up a slot in your deck, to have that as an out seems pretty good to me. Yeah, I think um, it makes sense. I'm totally fine with that. And they've got three more inside board. They I do, guess, yes, you know. yeah. Um, the creatures are where this deck really come, becomes very, very different from a Jun list, where we see things like Tarmogoyf and some of these really just big, beady kind of creatures. Mm -hmm. This, we have Young Pyromancer as a four of, which makes sense because we're running 31 instants and sorceries and oh this boy. deck alone. Um, again, this is a specific list, but 
that's roughly what you can expect around 30. Uh, Bedlam Reveler is the other one. Again, makes sense because you're going to have a lot of incense and sorceries in the right. yard. And that is your big beater. Yeah. That's it. That's the whole creature package. Just eight. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I really like this deck. I want to put this deck together. I have most of the pieces, so yeah. I might do that soon. Um, but it's just a really sweet deck. I'm happy to see it. What I love about it is it's your perfect mid-range deck in a deck that I wouldn't... in a in a combination I wouldn't have expected. Right. It also runs Lingering Souls. It does. So this doesn't die on board very easy because it's got so much removal. I mean, we see Fatal Push, Forked Bolt, uh, not Dreadbore, where was it? Uh, there is Lightning Dreadbore Bolt. in here, though. That's true, yeah. Light Terminate, Thought Seize to pull things from the hand. Like this, so much. This deck has so many answers that it can just build up a favorable board state, mm -hmm. resolve a Young Power Mancer early, and just get value never die and go wide which in a mid-range deck i haven't seen a go wide mid-range deck in a while yeah and i feel like that's exactly what it wants to do unless it just has a bedlam river out and yeah it's doing this thing i mean the bedlam reveler seems like a worse skirmag angler sort of thing to me you know what i mean um but i think in this okay. deck bedlam reveler seems a bit yeah. better right like and of... i think that's what's so interesting about it is yeah. generally when you think okay do i want to run this or this i would probably pick the gurmag angler but in a deck like this i would 100 percent take the reveler over it i think it's just so much better so i i don't know i'm, I'm interested by this yeah. list i haven't seen a mardu mid-range deck do really well recently i haven't seen one ever and so this is kind of exciting for me i really dig it yeah i'm into it um the last deck <laughs> everybody shudder uh lantern control came in eighth place here yeah um yeah the only reason i wanted to talk about this is because it's gotten a bit of an upgrade recently okay and this deck features this upgrade very well war of invention is a very powerful card that Costs X and three blue. It has improvised, so your artifacts can help you pay for it. Uh, you can then search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Meaning it plays a very similar role to something like Tinker. Yep. Uh, you get to fetch out and create a toolbox lantern control deck. Which means <laughs> you get to fetch out cards like Witchbane Orb, which gives you hexproof. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Graph Digger's Cage shuts off Dredge. Ensnaring Bridge, if you really need to find an ensnaring bridge, that's generally what you're going to be looking for the majority of the time. Wow. Uh, but yeah, you get to me like just fetch out the things that you need now. I mean, that's I, pretty sweet. It runs four of these Worm Invention cards uh, because they're just super, super yeah, good in this. Yeah, there's four of anything else that you would ever need in this deck. That's exactly it. And it makes perfect sense. I could not be more excited because I love Lantern Control. So I'm happy yeah. with this. Uh, again, it only came in eighth place. Sam Black, though, piloted it, if that makes you uh, want to play it anymore. Yeah, um, it kind of actually the does. Best. I respect that man. Yeah, I'm really stoked. It's creative dude. I really like this deck. Um, um, so I yeah. wonder why it didn't do better. Um, You know, I'm kind of interested to know why as well. I think Eldrazi Tron can sometimes just outpace it. Yeah. Affinity, kind of the same way, because they drop their hand turn one. Right. Um, Mardu midrange kind of sucks against this, I feel like, though. You would think, but then Because they have board... so much creature removal. Yes, but that main board, Blood Moon... Yeah, but, I mean, that shuts you off of a lot of things, but it doesn't actually shut you off of, like, the Codex Shredder and Lantern combo. Oh, so, like, sorry, you still yeah, I don't, get that. I don't know why I wasn't thinking of... It shuts that. you off of War of Invention for the most part and things like that. Um, this, um, yeah. You know, it's not the best. Um, I was thinking... Eldrazi Tron for some reason yeah, too. Yeah. I don't know why, but it no, does you're, you're 100% right. Off Eldrazi Tron. should have a bad matchup. Yeah. Uh, Death Shadow. I think it's kind of can go either way. To yeah. be honest, got, Death Shadow got third. Yeah. Let it be known. Uh, Dredge. I think it's hit or miss because sometimes it would outpace it, sometimes it wouldn't. It depends how quickly you can get your dredgers going. And then Blue White Control. I feel like wouldn't be the best. I feel like it uh -oh. would be kind of bad. Yeah. Um. Because again, your cards are so cheap. You're gonna get out under them most of the time. Oh, this is an interesting list. Uh, the blue white control deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blue white control decks have been really interesting lately. Uh, seeing a lot of spreading seas and things mm -hmm. like that to shut people off of lands. 
Uh, Gideon yeah. of the Trials has been huge lately. Which, uh, color me surprised. Yeah, 100%. Let me just say. Um, but it does sometimes <sighs> just win you the game. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's a very, very cheap alternate win. Yeah. Well, in a lot of these, we used to see in control decks, blue-white control decks, we see Gideon Jura as like a normal include as the finisher. Mm -hmm. It sort of fell out of favor for a long time, but with Gideon of the Trials, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. And so to bring that back in just sort of works. Uh, this this list in the sideboard also runs Elspeth, Sun's Champion, which I think is interesting. I think it's great. Um, because I think of the Sun's Champion as a bit more of like, it was really good in standard maybe okay in modern but a little slow because it's a six drop right but i mean i'm pretty happy to see it here i like it yeah i think in a deck that will slow the game down as much as this deck does because of spreading seeds because of obviously it's countering nature mm -hmm. uh if you can survive long enough to resolve that way to go seems great um it's interesting in the sideboard uh i wonder i'm just curious as to what decks that they run against that they want um this in the sideboard let me just check something really quick uh, Eldrazi would be interesting. Uh, destroy all creatures, the power four or greater. Ah. Although, to be honest, the bombs in Eldrazi Tron, I mean, there's a lot of Eldrazi, obviously, but, like, the ones that they tend to go for are, like, Karn or Ugin. So, like, that doesn't really There do are anything. those. Yeah. Um. Some Tron decks will run, some Tron decks will <laughs> run pure Eldrazi. Oh, yeah, but I think pumping. those have... I mean, they run the list that they that was in the top eight has the Endbringer, has the Matter Reshaper, has all yeah. that. This is um, honestly what I think the more efficient this is, list is. Yeah, this is much more straightforward Eldrazi, John. You're, sure. Yeah, they have four Walking Ballista. Mm -hmm. Hearts to you. Um, I did a Vintage Cube, yeah. and Walking Ballista just 100% wins games. Uh, um, oh, and Cube is phenomenal. Well, okay, so here's what I did. Talk to me. <laughs> I was up against... It was like a green deck that I was against, and I was in a ramp deck, so I was in like blue okay. green. Um, but it was artifact sub theme, and so I don't normally like playing swords, but right. I sided in the sort of feast and famine because it's pro green. So like, it just made sense. So what yeah. I did was I played walking ballista for one on turn, or for one or two on turn like two because I could ramp pretty quickly. Yeah, and then I played the sword maybe even the same turn and then equipped it the next turn and then they just gave up that was it that was the entire game <laughs> it was what? so great i mean what are they gonna do about it <laughs> was it just green it their deck was mono green holy crap yeah i don't know Why i also in up? another game had lightning greaves on walking ballista and somebody gave up too um so yeah, scary. walking ballista wins games as it turns out. Uh, um, well, I mean, you know, it's one of my favorite cards. Oh, I know, so. it's sweet. Oh, I yes. opened one uh, kind of recently, actually. Oh nice! I think I have five now. Sweet, because I had a playset at one point. Anyway, all that to be said, modern, modern is in a great place. That we were really we weird. were gonna say the same thing, but I didn't want it to be too weird. No, it's fine. We do weirder things than that. That would have been a sweet move on camera. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> they don't need to know about that. <laughs> Guys, this is a great tournament. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, so long story short, uh, Modern, 100% in a great place. Legacy seems to be doing really well. Happy to see Delver back. Standard, Absolutely. get your craft together. Honestly, yeah. Um, but other if, than that. <laughs> if you're not playing something to beat Team or Energy, I'm going to be disappointed. Honestly, yeah. Needs to happen. All right, so next we go to our question of the week and our last question of the week was what are you most excited for in rivals of ixalan which uh if you pre-released i want to know how that went absolutely if you didn't pre-release but you did comment on the thing then we might read it so we got a lot of responses thank you so much for all the support because honestly there was a lot but a lot of people said just dinosaurs because everybody's stoked about that elder dinosaurs mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them being in standard uh <laughs> Grebes, you get me uh for it to be finished and for dominaria to come back i mean yeah i mean i'm i'm optimistic about it only because i have to be because we have to wait for <laughs> dominaria um 
but I do. I have changed my tune a little bit, and I think that it could it could help stand uh, it out. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe, maybe. It's a strong. It's maybe. a strong maybe. Uh, a couple people said the legendary Fliplands, uh, which I also am kind of excited for. A few of them. I do think yeah. they're a little bit on the pricey side, so like we may not see too many brews out of them. But I do like the Reanimator one quite I a lot. I think they come together more so in Commander as agreed. Sorry, as being it's um. Uh, being more premier, especially the one that adds X for your for your life. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that one's sweet. Yeah, that one's really really good. Yeah. Um, energy bands, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if it needs to be banned or if we all just need to get it together. Well, here's my here's my issue. We can take a second and tangent. Yeah, because we're it. gonna. Um, here's my issue with an energy banning. Which card do you ban? Well, that's the thing, because the the thing about it is every card makes energy, and then every other card yeah. uses that energy. Yeah. So it's like you can't just ban one thing. I feel right. like um, right. I, I agree. There's with that. like you could say, I guess, take their win, their or their most efficient win with Bristling Hydra, because mm-hmm. it's the scariest at four with four power, and then it gets bigger and hexproof. So yeah. okay, maybe. But here's my other thing. Um, on like the flip side of the argument, that is, the the times I argue against banning things are because there's an answer that we refuse to play. Uh, basically, it goes back to the Aetherworks Marvel argument, mm. where I believe that if we w- could have beat that deck, there was, and I don't even remember the card name because it was never played at a tournament. But the freaking um, three drop black card that pulls an yeah. artifact from their hand. Library, graveyard. And it surgically extracts them, basically. Yeah. Like, that was the answer. It was the answer. I get that it's vulnerable. I get it can be countered, but it's freaking worth it. Just do yeah. it. So, I do, there's not an easy answer to Team Rare Energy because it's so efficient. It's the jund of standard right now. It is, yeah. Um, outpace, out resource. It's the jund of standard without a Bloodbraid Elf. <laughs> being like the bad guy there's nothing i can stick my finger on say. yeah yeah i guess maybe um the energy land Aether name? Hub? yeah maybe but even so but uh, yeah that I will don't know. slow it down a lot but there's good mana fixing honestly right not that much a tune with aether exactly there's good mana fixing like that gives you energy and fetches a land so like there's just so much going for it it would be very difficult to ban does it fetch um, a forest or is it a land I don't honestly. I don't know because I don't really care about standard. But like, <laughs> I think it's a land. I think it is as well, but I could be wrong. Uh, we can try and find out. Um, tune with aether. Really, it's gonna do this now. Okay, it is just a basic yeah. land. Um, so we... yeah, I mean, there's just so much going on in that deck that it would be very difficult to pick one thing. Exactly. Um, I mean. Uh, Rogue Refiner? <laughs> also? Okay, so we banned Bristling Hydra, Rogue Refiner, Attune with Aether, and also Aether Hub. Yeah. So now they just turn into a Scarab And Servant of the deck. Conduit. Um, and World of Virtuoso. Yeah. All, yeah. It, it, it's just too good. Confiscation coup, harness yeah. lightning. Confiscation's <laughs> coup honestly isn't super exciting. No, but it adds a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, but you are probably dead before they need that. Yeah, honestly, sure. <clears throat> there's just so much in it. Honestly, it's it just wouldn't work to ban something. I don't think. Yeah, I'm so um, disheartened. Speaking of bans, though, somebody's saying to see what Blood Sun, what formats Blood Sun gets banned in, which I think is interesting. I honestly I don't think, don't think it will any. be banned. Uh, no, definitely not banned. right off the bat. Obviously, mm-hmm. if it has some crazy impact down the road, maybe. But like, I don't know. Um, it does shut off a lot of things, though. Uh, well, Primal it, Calamity. A lot of people are excited about. I think to your point, Blood Sun looks like a card that people are going to use to turn on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, make bounce lands better in modern, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, unless we see some kind of nasty strong deck come out with blood sun well what i think in most honestly the most played lands in a lot of formats are fetch lands 
and it that's shuts true. off Vetchlands. It's true. And so that's what I'm a little worried about is to see how that interaction goes because it will just shut yeah. off some things. I you think know? honestly that would be kind of healthy. Um, I mean, kind of. It might steer people away from Fetchlands. Well, that's the thing too is the big issue with uh, Fetchlands is you is efficiency. You hit all your mm-hmm. drops whenever you need it with fetches. Uh, so that will slow down a lot of your decks like Death Shadow. Yeah. Like, or really anything in modern. Honestly. Yeah, 100%. Anything. Um, because um, all of them use fetch lands. So pretty much all of them, I would say. I think that could be a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't see it not impacting something. Oh, it's going to impact a lot, you I know? think. Um, yeah. I definitely think it'll impact a lot. Yeah. I don't know if it'll ever be enough to be banned, but we'll find out. Right. Um, right. A lot of other people, though, were saying just the tribes in general, vampires excuse me merfolk uh and then of course dinosaurs again so um, a lot of excitement around rivals uh somebody also mentioned i do want to point out the enrage mechanic is getting a lot of support which i think is great yeah uh there nice. are a lot of very very good enragers i would say uh in this uh set so i am excited to see if an enrage deck comes out of this but i don't know if it'll be quick enough to beat anything that's in standard right now ramen up red and teamer energy is just too good yeah um so that's fair that's where i'm at okay yeah just thought you should know what's the question of the week the question of the week is what does standard need (laughs) i have to write this down so i can make the post (laughs) um i know that kevin you don't like standard but i really don't i really after this gp i think you know it's fair to ask i do think it's fair to ask what does standard need does it need another band does it need an answer yeah um Oh, it's so gross right now. It is. It's just disheartening to look at standard tournaments and Demer Energy. Honestly, though, these are, this has kind of been the way standards been devolving over the last yeah, four yeah. years or so, I want to say. 100%. There, and it started for me with Devotion Decks in Did it really? Theros. That far back? Yeah. I mean, they did take over. I yeah, no, every that. deck was a mono black or mono blue deck. Mono um, black Devotion really took it home with Grey Merchant. Yeah. And before that, it was like Esper control list before the Devotion Esper, stuff came Esper out. Esper always did well, and it matched up pretty well against... I played Esper at the time. Yeah. That was the only time I actually enjoyed Standard, fun fact. But it was just because I liked control decks. Yeah, I just got all the good stuff. But Yeah. I mean... Ashiok. Oh, God. I love Ashiok. There, there are so many reasons. that I could talk forever about that yeah, Standard yeah. because I hated it so much. A lot um, of people didn't like it. I mean... It's fair to say, but yeah. we've, we've still like kept up with the Theros bug. Maybe yeah. Magic's just standard, specifically, is just sick right now. We just had the flu. The it Theros has the cancer. modern thing that we had in modern, I think, for a long time, mm-hmm. where it was like, okay, we have a deck rising to the top. They would ban that deck, and then we get another one. So, like, at the very beginning, it was Infect, but like, right. then eventually we got to things like Birthing Pod, they banned Pod, then we got Splinter Twin, then they banned Twin. Now we're in just a really good place, I think. I think yeah. for a very short time we had Dredge at the top because of the Grave Troll unbanning. Um, but I think now like we're actually in a great place with Modern. Yeah. So they just need to get their crap together for Standard is really what it amounts to. I'm in total agreement. <laughs> um, the yeah. issue is it's never going to get necessarily to that specific healthy spot mm-hmm. because it always changes. Yeah, It's a rotating format. I mean, it does rotate, so it... Ah. Hopefully, when next rotation happens, or even when this set drops, maybe we'll get some interesting changes. I really doubt it. I hope um, so. <laughs> I hope so, but I really doubt it. I'd like to play without fear again. <laughs> you have so much fear for standard. I'm just worried about standard, man. Yeah, I am too. It's gone off to college, and it's gone kind of crazy. Won't answer my, my phone calls. It's become like everybody else. I just wanted to come home. It can bring its laundry. It's fine. I'll cook for it. I'll buy it groceries. Yeah. I just want like a week (laughs) on your breaks. Don't even text me anymore, Standard. Um. Anyway, moving on to our Kraken Packs. Um, (laughs) Oh, we come to the end of the episode? Yeah, we're already at the end of the episode. My goodness. Uh, This is our last Ixalan pack. We're going to be in Rivals of Ixalan as of next week. I want to cry. Do you? I'm so happy. <laughs> I was about to say, I, you're not sad. Um, I have been so disappointed with the Exelon. This is our last chance to get our goal cards. Mine is Itlamot. Mine is Carnage Tyrant. Do you have faith that you're going to get it? 
Um, you know, honestly, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Standard cards have not been good to me. I just want a big, scary dinosaur. Um, I'm getting there. I'm in my uncommons. Uh, I do like that card. I'm just gonna. Oh, well, I didn't get it, but I got hostage oh, shaker. Not bad. Uh, which is a hundred percent the pick. Hostage shaker oh, well. is fantastic. I did not get my gold card. What'd you get? Verdant Sun's Avatar. Oh, dude. Whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under my control, I gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Um, that's a limited I mean, bomb pick yeah, it's for bomb sure. Pick. Uh, everything else we got a few good things. Um, Deathless Ancient is okay as a bomb in a vampire deck. Um, nothing else like crazy. Nest Robber's good red card filler, but it's Sun's mm. Avatar all the time. Um, the only other cards I really particularly enjoy, I got Paladin of the Bloodstained, which is just a good uh, value card, and then Water Trap Weaver, which is good to That's, play. Yeah, an excellent one. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, Hostage Taker, 100%. Yeah. We never got our goal cards. I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I would have liked to have gotten a Carnage Tyrant more than anything else, to be honest. Um, I only say that because it would make me like uh, Ixalan more. And you don't want to. And then I would be even more disappointed <laughs> when it proved to be a traitor. <laughs> it's just been so boring. It has. Um, it's been very boring. Drafting it has been okay. Um, It's not bad to draft. I believe... I think Rivals is better. I didn't pre-release at all. I wish I had... Yeah, I wish I had too. But there was I an online event that I tried to join, but it was only up for 24 hours, and I couldn't get it in time, unfortunately. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Um, so I ended up drafting an Ixalan draft, oh. and I ended up in green-white dinos, which is fine. Mm -hmm. The deck was decent. Um, I think I went like 2-1 and one Not bad. or something like that in the league. Um, I went 2-1 and one like consistently in all of the drafts I did, and I ended up doing like four or five drafts this weekend. That's wrong with that, dude. Because I, I'm ranting at this point. I had to download a virtual machine because I run Mac on everything. And so I downloaded a virtual machine because I was tired of dual booting my laptop. Mm. And so I got that on my Mac Mini. Then I installed Windows 10 on the the virtual machine and then i got magic online and then i tried streaming at one point if you saw like a 30 second video of me trying to stream a vintage cube it's because i tried to stream a vintage cube what and happened? then it crashed the virtual machine crashed. i see uh because it like takes up so much cpu yeah that it just doesn't really function very well when i try and stream off of it so yeah it it's unfortunate sense. but now i do get to play online so nice. i'm happy about that um and my vintage cube decks were awesome they're so much fun. Yeah. I didn't win, like, I didn't 3-0 any of the leagues or anything like that. I wish I had Parks, who has been, like, relentlessly, like, playing the Vintage Cube, has done insanely well. He's been, like, 3-0-ing yeah. stuff back to back. He texted me the other day. Or maybe I saw him. I can't remember. But the first thing he said to me was, Will, Vintage Cube is life. <laughs> Honestly, all those pictures you see on Instagram of the Vintage Cube, that's just parks. Like That has dude nothing to do with yeah. either of us. <laughs> like, um, he, I don't want to say he's going to be streaming again soon. I um, want him to be. I, would, we would, I asked him to the other day, or I asked him if he could the other day. That's the thing, is we'd all love him to, but um, he moved recently. Good for him. Yep. Um, but where he is, the internet is something north of atrocious. Yeah. So he's having some issues streaming which we get, um, and we just don't have the time. You and yeah, I. unfortunately. unfortunately. And, Jinx, pinch poke, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> yeah, and the virtual machine thing doesn't really work as well as right. I was hoping. So. Um, I could maybe very sporadically and never on a set schedule, but I could Yeah, that's your try. problem is your schedule yeah, is so it, whack. It just changes I, if, every week. Honestly, if I had the, like, if my machine could handle it, I could probably yes. do it more often. Um, I yeah. did stream. We're just ranting at this point. So if you made it this far, congratulations. This is what we actually do when we're not behind a camera. Yeah. Thanks, um, thanks for hanging out. And half the time this is what we do on camera anyway. Um, sure. <laughs> I did stream a Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. 
I watched a second of that. I can't remember what I was doing. When did you stream it? I str- I've been streaming it all this past weekend. Okay. So Who like, was I? Because I, I definitely stopped in to watch a little bit. The first segment was like 30 minutes long, and I got to like Brock's gym or something like that. My team was... Basically, all you need to know is there was a Mewtwo on my team um, named Frieza, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I ended up streaming twice the day we're recording this, which is Sunday. I streamed twice today. The nice. first time was like for 45 minutes. And for some reason, OBS just decided to shut everything down in the middle of like the stream. I was actually hanging out and like talking with friend AJ who's been on there. I mean... He just subbed like eight months ago, so he's been with us since the beginning. So we were just hanging out, having a conversation, and then it just crashed. I was like, that's a problem. Um, And so I got back up. Thankfully, he was ready and like joined back in, which was really cool on his part, by the way. Dope. And um, ended up streaming for another like hour and a half. And so streamed for like two hours today. Nice. And it was not magic related at all. We play other games. We do. It's fine. I literally have in parentheses we play other games nice. in the post. I uh when the hell was stream you oh, not StarCraft. Uh a a new game that we will play at some point. Um I'm plugging They Are Billions for you. Oh, for I know you. what that is. It's uh pretty dope. I watched Day Nine play it. It's pretty dope. It looks fun. It looks like a lot like StarCraft, but at your own pace. Well, not really. At least from the beginning that I saw. I should yeah, say. it's your your own pace is thrown out the window so quickly. Uh, okay. Yeah, the game will ream you very fast. <laughs> that's not a family friendly thing to say because that's a <laughs> we can't anyway, that's fine. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time though. Yes. that's a story for another day, guys. Uh, yeah. We are finally going to get out of here and stop ranting in your ear, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, definitely, the judge thing is a good thing. Check out the GP top eights on all that stuff because it was a really interesting GP. Um, but with that, we hope you guys will enjoy Rivals also. Yes. I don't want to forget that. Enjoy Rivals of Ixalan. With that, though, we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Bye.